In this video, we'll be talking about adiabatic ideal gas processes. As always, we have the ideal gas law, which is true at any state in any process, and is shown in the upper right of our screen, where energy equals energy. Energy in terms of the absolute pressure times the volume equals energy in terms of N, the number of moles, times R, the universal gas constant, times T, the absolute temperature. And as always, we should draw the PV energy state diagram as shown in the upper left, where the x-axis is the volume of the gas, and the y-axis is the absolute pressure of the gas in our system. And I always uh, recommend always drawing these isolated thermal curves. So on each curve, there's a constant temperature. There's also a constant internal energy due to the internal kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules in the system. And for curves that are farther from the origin, there are curves which are hotter temperatures, which equates to curves which has higher internal kinetic energy. For any process, we need to define the system. And this system will be a closed system with no mass entering or leaving the system during the process. And so there's going to be a constant number of moles of defined gas homogeneously containing this volume. The solid gray line shows the system, and the dashed gray line shows the interface between the system and the surroundings. For a closed system undergoing an adiabatic process, the process is also isentropic. Isentropic meaning constant entropy. Therefore, the change in entropy, delta S, is zero. In this process, entropy is not increasing. Therefore, it's reversible. So for example, as shown in the PV energy state diagram in the magenta curves, the magenta curve farther from the origin is a curve at higher isentropic constant entropy curve, and one closer to the origin is a lower isentropic constant entropy curve. And then I'm showing two states, an initial state at volume initial and pressure initial, and then this process I'm showing is a process in which there's an adiabatic compression of the ideal gas. So the final volume is less than initial, and I'm showing the final volume and the final pressure. And both the initial volume, initial pressure point are on the same magenta isentropic curve as the final volume, final pressure, and all the intermediate states are running along this magenta colored curve from the initial state to the final state. And given our ideal gas assumptions and running along this isentropic curve, this process is, is reversible since entropy does not increase either going up or down. So for example, one could start the initial volume, initial pressure, and go up that curve, every point along that curve, to the final state, and then come back down again, once again, following that magenta curve to the initial state, and there would be no entropy change of the ideal gas inside my system. For this adiabatic compressive ideal gas process shown, one can see that the final state is at a higher temperature than the initial state. It's a, it's a higher temperature as shown because you can see at the isothermal line at the final state is an isothermal line which is farther from the origin than the isothermal line at the initial state. The word adiabatic means that there is no heat transfer between the system and its surrounding at the interface. So therefore, energy in terms of heat in or out equals zero when following along this magenta isentropic curve. Therefore, looking at our system energy diagram, as shown in yellow, energy in terms of heat in or heat out equals zero. So therefore, I'm not drawing a line energy in terms of heat in my energy system diagram because there is no heat transfer between the system and the surroundings, the surrounding of the system during this adiabatic compression. Considering now our checking count analogy, we know that the final state has more internal thermal kinetic energy than the initial state. So the delta U went up. So the checking count balance went up. And we know that energy in terms of heat, there was no exchange, so there's nothing there. So my checking count balance went up, or my energy balance went up from the initial state to the final state. So something had to come in in terms of energy. Well, for a closed system, we only have three types of energy. The, re the remaining type of energy would be work, and so therefore work had to come into the system. So the work in would be positive, and the work out would be negative. And you can see that I drew the black arrow as far as work coming in, and I drew it such that the length of the black arrow equal the length of the blue arrow. So the magnitude of the work in had to equal the magnitude of the change in the internal energy. As can be seen by the slope in the PV energy state diagram of the magenta isentropic curves compared to the blue isothermal curves, you can see that the constant entropy curves or the isentropic curves are steeper than the isothermal curves in the PV diagram. As we've said before, in this adiabatic process is shown, the internal thermal energy at the final state is greater than the internal thermal energy at the initial state. 
Therefore, the final temperature is greater than initial temperature, and the change in the internal energy is greater than zero during this compressive process. Therefore, like all other of these processes we discussed in the other videos, therefore, like every other process we've discussed, we can always write that the change in the internal thermal kinetic energy of the molecular gas, delta U, is always equal to N, the number of moles, times C sub E, the molar specific heat at constant volume, times the change in temperature, where the temperature final minus the temperature initial. Now using conservation of energy for this closed system, we have an energy balance equation for the closed system, which is not accelerating, that the change in the internal thermal kinetic energy equals the energy in terms of heat in minus the energy in terms of work out. For this case, where it's adiabatic and there is no heat transfer between the system and the surrounding or the surrounding of the system, we know that energy in terms of heat in equals zero. So therefore, our energy balance equation for this adiabatic case is the change in internal thermal energy equals minus the energy in terms of work out net. Therefore, the work out equals minus the internal thermal energy due to the internal kinetic energy of the molecules or gas. And since we had previously solved for equation form delta U, we can now have the work out equals minus delta U, or minus N times C sub V times the delta T. We also know that the work out is the area under the pressure curve from the initial volume to the final volume is shown in gray, which is shown in integral form in the equation there. However, we can see that the variable P during this process is, is a true variable and is changing at each instant of time in the process as the process follows the magenta curve at each state. Using the ideal guess law, we can represent P at each state and in all intermediate states in this process as a function of nr, t, and v. And we can recognize that all intermediate states of this adiabatic process as it, as it follows the magenta curve, both the temperature and the volume are also changing and are not constants. Now that we have an equation form, the change in the internal thermal kinetic energy, delta U, and in equation form also the energy in terms of work out, we can see that the directionality and magnitudes of these equations match with our original thoughts on the system energy diagram in that for this closed system the energy balance is true. And as another check, for any compressive system, we know that the work out of the gas is less than zero. For any adiabatic ideal gas process, we will find that the ratio of specific heats is going to be very critical to help us understand what's happening. The ratio of specific heat has as a numerator the molar specific heat at constant pressure, C sub P, and at the denominator the molar specific heat at constant volume, C sub V. And if you recall from the first video, the molar specific heat at constant volume, C sub V, equals the number of degrees of freedom of that ideal gas divided by 2 times R, the universal gas constant. So for a mon monatomic gas, there are 3 degrees of freedom, all translational. Therefore, C sub V is 3 over 2 times R. For a diatomic gas, there are five degrees of freedom, three of which are translational and two of which are rotational. Therefore, the molar specific heat of constant volume for a diatomic gas is five over two times R. Also recall that the molar specific heat at constant pressure is greater than the molar specific heat at constant volume, such that C sub P equals C sub V plus R. Therefore, for a monatomic gas, the ratio of C sub P to C sub V is 5 to 3, which is approximately 1.666. And the ratio of specific heat for a diatomic gas is 7 over 5, or 1.4. Therefore, air, which mainly contains nitrogen and oxygen, both of which are diatomic gases, has a ratio of specific heat which is much closer to 1.4, than 1.667. In these videos, I've always talked about molar specific heat, and those have dimensions energy per absolute temperature per mole. There is also a mass specific heat, which is unfortunately also shown with the exact same nomenclature, either C sub P or C sub B, and that has dimensions energy per absolute temperature per mass. Whereas the mass specific heat can be obtained directly from the molar specific heat by dividing the molar specific heat by the molecular weight of the gas. For adiabatic ideal gas processes only, Therefore, I'm showing it inside a magenta box. There's relationships between the initial temperature and the initial volume and the final temperature and the final volume, as well as the temperature and volume at any and all intermediate states between the final and the initial state. And you can see that this process involves the ratio of specific heats. In the lower magenta box, we can also see that there is a relationship between pressure and the volume at all states in an adiabatic ideal gas process.
such as the product of the pressure at the initial state times the volume at the initial state raised to the ratio of specific heat equals the pressure at the final state times the volume at the final state raised to the ratio of specific heat. In the next video in the series, we'll talk about how these adiabatic ideal gas process equations are arrived at. A word of caution, these equations shown in the magenta boxes are only true for adiabatic ideal gas processes, which is significantly different than the ideal gas law, which is always true giving the ideal gas assumptions at every state for any process. So the ideal gas law represents an equation at a state, whereas the equations shown in the magenta boxes are not a representation of a single state, but a representation of a process. So for example, they have not a single state, but they have st the initial state as well as a final state. Now looking back to our PV energy state diagram, it's good to have a mental understanding of what's happening. So this process is shown as the compressive process. Think back if you've ever used a bicycle hand pump to pump up the tires in your bike. When the plunger is applied, the system has high volume. And then as you compress the volume, by reducing the system volume, we know that the pressure rises. And we know that the surroundings are putting work into the system in this compressive process. And if you do this quickly, there's not time for much heat to leave the system. And since you are putting work in, and there's not much time for energy in terms of heat out to go, therefore energy in terms of delta U must go up. So the system's getting hotter. And if the process of compressing the gas in this hand pump, you've ever put your hand on the wall of the tube of this pump as you're pressing down, you can feel that the tube is getting hot. And it's getting hot because the internal gas is hot. And since the internal gas is hotter than the tube and the surroundings, the internal gas in the system would like to transfer heat to the surroundings. But in this adiabatic process, we're assuming that during this compressive time, there is no heat being transferred out. So the process, for example, could be happening so fast, there's not time for energy in terms of heat to go out. Or for example, the walls of the tube are perfectly insulated, so there can, no, can be no heat transfer. Therefore, we know that the temperature of the gas contained in the system in an adiabatic compressive process increases. And the exact opposite happens in an adiabatic expansion process. So in an adiabatic expansive process, where the final volume is greater than the initial volume, energy in terms of work is coming out of the system during the expansion process. And since the process is adiabatic and therefore is perfectly insulated and there's no heat transfer between the system and the surroundings in this expansion process, we know that the final temperature of the gas in the system must be less than the initial temperature of the gas in the system, and the delta U for this adiabatic expansion process would be less than zero. And therefore, for an adiabatic expansive process, Looking at our energy state diagram, just the directionality of both the blue and the black arrows would change. 